Hey everybody, welcome back to Art of La Carte and today I am doing a tutorial video on drawing a wolf running. Now I've actually done these kind of videos, I have a lot of drawing wolf videos out there, but they're kind of old, they're a little bit old and, and I thought I would update them. As you can see I'm drawing digitally. I find that drawing this way helps you to see what I'm doing better because you don't have my hand getting in the way, but you can totally draw these traditionally if you want to or if you want to follow along on your tablet go right ahead and I know some of you are going to ask what I am drawing on so I have my Wycom Cintiq tablet and I'm using Clip Studio Paint so if you have any more questions about that let me know in the comment section below I might do a little follow-up video on that if you want to learn a little bit more about the digital art world so as you can see here on my screen, I have two sketches that I have done of a wolf running. And I wanted to start off here and not just go with a blank drawing. First, this allows you to see what I'm going for in my drawing. And also uh, lets me discuss things before I get them um, sketched out. Now, if you're drawing digitally, I have um, this on one layer and then I have my, my new sketch on a separate layer. This allows me, if I make a mistake, I, I can erase my drawing that I'm working on. I don't have to worry about messing up my sketches. But let's talk about this sketch first because a lot of times when we are drawing, we want to just go with that final look. And so we start off with, with the, trying to get this outline going on here. And while it can work for us, what I find happens is that we are so focused on the minute details that when we get done, our, our drawings look wonky. Um, the proportions are off, um, things aren't matching up, and then we have to erase it. And we have put so much work and effort into this beginning detail that it's a lot of time wasted and it can get super frustrating. So the way that I approach my drawings is by doing a kind of a scribble drawing, also known as a gesture drawing, where you're getting in the motion, the shape first before you get in, into any detail. Now the fun thing about gesture drawing is that it is not meant to be perfect. In fact, you really don't erase with gesture drawing. You're looking for the correct line and you're not worrying about a mistake line. So you can see here, there are a lot of different lines here. And when I go to do a finished cleaned up piece, I'll either erase the lines that I don't need or trace over to get a clean page. But this allows me to get all the proportions and the energy in here. So before we jump into ours, let's just look at what kind of goes into this. So first you're gonna see these inner shapes here. These are my shape blockings. As I'm looking at maybe a reference photo or an image or watching a video or even real life, though I don't see wolves in real life, uh, as I'm looking at something, I try to break down the image into some basic shapes. So for this wolf, I have a circle shape here for the shoulders and a circle shape for their hips. I'll even put a circle shape in here for like the, the chest, the rib cage, the belly area. And you can see how these overlap each other in this one. But if we go over here, down to this one, you'll see that they don't overlap as much. And that's because I, I wanna be able to squash and stretch my drawings out. So something that's connecting these shapes together is backbone. So any kind of animal that you are drawing um, generally has a backbone, unless you're drawing a jellyfish. A jellyfish, I don't think have backbones. but you're, it's that motion line and that's going to connect those out. So as you can see the top drawing here, the wolf's legs are bunched together. So that backbone is going to be arched slightly where this one he's stretched out. So it's going to be a little more flat or even bowed down just a little bit. And you can see that those circles kind of interact with them. So if you look at this full shape, if you want to do connect all of those in together, you can see this kind of odd looking rectangle shape, but there's no straight lines. It's nice and curved. When you're drawing something living, very rarely are you going to use a straight line. If you do that, it's gonna generally make your drawing a little stiff, a little statuesque, and it's not gonna give you the motion that you want. Uh, you spend some time practicing. It's just this phase where you're blocking in the shapes of what you're drawing and getting this part down here finding out how these all mesh together before you get into the detail. So spend some time drawing out this. You can even see that this backbone line goes into the tail. So have fun with that swishiness of the tail there. 
I'm going to take a nice light colored pencil. I'm going to find just the, the right one. You might find this funny because I'm, I'm using a uh, because I'm doing digital. Uh, the software that I use with Clip Studio Paint really lets me customize my brushes. And so, so like here's like a smooth kind of foggy one where here I can add a little bit more texture. I can add even more texture, make it dark. So you can get pencils that represent like all scales of, of lead hardness. This one right here, because I can get a nice dark line, but my initial lines are soft. That way, when I make my, my initial shapes, if I don't like it, then I don't have to worry about it. But if I when I find that line I really like, I can darken that in. As I said earlier, tips with gesturing is that you're not worried about the bad lines. If you stop to erase your lines every time you make a bad line, um, you're going to be erasing a lot. So in gesturing, you're just going to focus on the lines that you want. So I'm going to get that shape in here. And then looking over here at how the head and the neck come out, you can see that it just flows right out of this circle shape here. So I'm going to bring this up. So it doesn't just kind of protrude out. It just flows right on up. I'm not going in and erasing, cleaning this up, just getting this line in here. Here is a definite bonus with drawing digitally. So as I started this sketch, it made it way too close to my edge of my paper. If you were doing something traditionally, that would kind of be a bad thing. You'd have to tape on some extra paper, but with, with digital, you can just move the sketch over. That's so nice. All right, so I've got my shape here. As I was talking about the, with the neck, this knowing how this neck flows out of the body here you could you could draw draw your neck down if you want maybe the wolf the wolf to be like drinking or eating or something you could have it down you could have it straight off maybe he's stalking something you could have it way up high if you wanted him howling at the moon uh, it works it doesn't work so well with an arched back but it gives you some options muzzle coming in here and i'm just gonna kind of put like a, a little bit of a rectangle right there so there is his head. He's looking a little foxish. So I'm going to make his muzzle a little bit bigger. Researching the anatomy of whatever you're drawing can help you. Um, if you find that your wolves are looking a little bit off and they don't look like wolves, uh, check that out. So for like a fox, his muzzle is longer but more narrow. Um, for a coyote, it's a little bit smaller. And for a, a wolf, I found that they have this really kind of um, very large mouth. Um, so over here we have his shoulders. We want to think about where his shoulder blades are going. So I'm gonna use kind of a, a triangle shape for his shoulder blades. And so the socket's right in there. And, and for this part, I'm just gonna draw like a stick figure because it's just super easy to maneuver things over. So I'm gonna draw this part of his leg going back. And this would be where his elbow is right in here. And then I'm gonna bring down the fore paw leg down to his, what we consider an ankle, and then back to his paw right there. So I'm getting the shape in first. Again, if you go right in and just try to get this outlining detail, sometimes you, you find that you can get a better position if you're just drawing a couple of simple lines and ball joints rather than trying to draw an accurate uh, wolf leg. So I did that on a different layer, so now I can come back with my pencil, and now that I see that, I can start sketching in kind of how I want his little legs to be. Again, I'm not getting into that super hyper detail going on there. Just want that to, to look in there. Just wanna see how that's gonna look. I'm gonna clean that part up so I can see what's going on. Now you definitely don't have to put that in in a different color. I just wanted you guys to see that. So I'll show you how um, I'm gonna do that back here with this back leg. First, let's show you the back leg, what it's doing. So again, here's, here's the back leg and the hip right up here. So then it's gonna come down to his knee, back to his ankle, and then down to his paw. Give that a, so it kind of gives you this little zigzag going on there. So here's my hip coming down to the knee, back to the back foot ankle, 
and then down to the paw. And there's actually a part, if he has his foot on the ground, that would actually bend out with the toes, but since it's gonna be in the air, that's just gonna be straight out. Now, learning anatomy for whatever you're drawing is super hyper important. Even if you are drawing something that's a really stylistic, and I know that people like to create their own kind of creatures and sometimes they have like a, a dog hybrid magical creature. Learning what makes the real thing move and do what it's supposed to do then can even help your imaginary creatures that you create. So studying is those I can't I can't stress it enough. Referencing and studying anatomy is super important. So let's look at this other side back leg. He's kind of hidden back there. But I'm gonna still just kind of draw it out there. There's his leg just kind of coming down nuts. Straight down, but notice how this line isn't completely straight. I have a little bit of a curve to it. And I don't see a lot of it. I'm just gonna draw that right in there like that. And then this other back leg here is kind of reaching forward and down maybe a little bit. And the last thing I need to do is get his tail in here, which I love. I love these motions of these tails. So I'm gonna come start up right here at the backbone right here. And I'm just gonna bring this out and just create my tail swoop. And it kind of floofs out and then it's a whole shape. There we go. So there we have our kind of just really sketched rough drawing of our wolf running. Now, if you're like me, always my sketch looks so good, and then when I go to ink it in or clean it up, I lose some of that. It's frustrating, and it just takes practice to find those the, the correct line to go with and to not lose that motion. Anyway, guys, thanks for hanging out with me. I'm trying to draw and create your own drawings, whether they're wolves or foxes or coyotes or dogs or mermaids or whatever. If you're brand new to my channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any future videos. And as always, God bless you guys, and we'll see you in the next art video. Bye-bye!